Okay, welcome back. This is going to be video number four of our data man um, walk cycle. And it's walk cycle number four, actually. And what we're going to do is have our character with our infinite walk on is going to walk forward. And then we're going to do a change direction or a turn in this case. And you can see as the data man moves forward and walks to the other end of the block, he's also going to turn. That's what these little blue objects here on the ground uh, do is allow us to change direction a few degrees at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to import our data man or our character into the city scene that we created. This will give us a frame of reference uh, or a purpose for why our character is going to turn. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open a scene. And I'm just going to start with my basic R city here. Save that one. And what I've already done is I've set my project to my city. And this is going to take a minute. Okay. And there it goes, it's starting to load. And once it's done loading, what I want to do then is import the walk cycle character that we made for our infinite walk. Okay, so now that it looks like the city has completely downloaded, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to import. And I'm going to go to my folder that contains my character, in this case, data man. So my data man walking into my scenes. And I set this up as the data man walking to. Uh, you'll import whatever the name is for your character. And once I do that, you can see that it's weird. The skeleton kind of pops in. It has something to do with the way that we've actually uh, set up our data man. And if I zoom around a little bit, you can see that the body is all the way out there. I don't know why it did that. Um, maybe it's the rigging. If I hit play, everything pops together. And then if I hit the rewind, data man is back together um, with the skeleton. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh could be a multitude of things so now i'm going to select this data man and i want to actually go into the folder my grouping folder and select everything that's inside that grouping folder and the upper folder turns this sort of dark blue and everything is a light blue the reason why i'm going to do that is i'm going to rescale him down to fit into my city I hit f on my keyboard zoom in scale him down some more And I can hit F again. A little bit more, maybe. Maybe it's too much. Let's see. Bring him up out of the ground. And I think he needs to come down some more. That might be good. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him. And instead of putting them back in the same place I was just last time, I'm going to put them someplace new. Maybe I'll have them uh, not what I wanted to do. I accidentally shrunk him some more. To move him, there we go. Use the W key. And I'm going to move him by the plane here. And um. Maybe, uh, maybe set him up here to walk around the Empire State Building. Okay, so F on my keyboard to zoom in a little bit so I can kind of set this up a little bit. Move back a little bit. Don't have his feet all the way embedded in the ground. That'd be a good start right about there. 
All right, so now I've got him placed in the scene where I want to have him turn. I'm going to push him back a little bit. I'm going to have him make this turn right here and head that direction. All right, so first things I'm going to do uh, before I do anything else is I'm going to select him by the control. And if I expanded this a little bit, we can see that this is a control reference. Okay, so we have several things. We have the basic model, the reference, and control reference. I'm going to select them by the reference. In a, a completely rigged character, you might have a root, which would be kind of a square or a circle down around his feet. Sometimes they're different shapes, but that would be your root control. This uh, control reference will work the same way for this uh, particular model. And again, we just uh, set this one up by our... Um, main control and I see that I have a little issue here with the knee uh, came out earlier I thought this was fixed but <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and try to do that again I'm gonna show that to you real quick um, sometimes when you get a model it's not always perfect you might have to make some modifications or fixes in this case this is a paint issue and what I'm gonna do is go back to my rigging skin and paint weights, select my option box, and select my basic model. And you can see that when I do that, um, with this, uh, my tool settings come up for my painting, and it should be populated with all of these different selections. This is his left leg, and <clears throat> what I wanna do is find what part of the leg that this is being affected by. And it looks like it's probably the left leg here. So left foot, there's an upper leg. This is the knee piece of that leg. And my guess is that this should be all white um, for influence. There's a slight amount of influence here. If I were to go in here and down here under my brushes, I'm gonna choose my hard brush and right now I have my value set to zero for when I was taking influences out. This actually needs some influences added back into it because the influences have been taken away and either this leg here is causing some influence or something else is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this all the way back up to one and then I'm gonna run my paintbrush over the top of it. Hopefully this will fix it. Especially out here towards the end. I hold down the B and then uh, my left mouse button, I can make the, my brush bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to remove this influence. Rotate around a little bit. Hmm, doesn't seem to wanna cooperate. A little tough sometimes. Just check to make sure I'm using the right thing here. Yep, should be this one. It's not what this class is supposed to be about, but uh, I guess we're going to learn a little bit about painting weights. Alright, there we go. Just had to get it from the right angle. Make sure we 
don't have any other influences we don't want. Oh, right there seems to be some issues. Okay, down to that red. Now, right there, I'm going to want to take care of that blue as well. So I'm going to shrink my brush down. B on my keyboard. Move my mouse left to right. I'm going to shrink that down. Now, this is an influence I want to remove, that blue. So I'm going to shrink that down, and there we go. It's gone. All right, so now I think we can actually start with the animation. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this tool. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard, close that out. And now all of those negative influences should be gone. Again, this is something you might run into from time to time when you're working with your characters. Um, so knowing a little bit about how to do modeling along with your animation is important. So I'm going to change this tab back to animation. And now if I back off, and I hit play, Data Man disappears. That's because he went all the way back to the very beginning. So I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times. Hopefully this will bring him back. All right, so the way to stop that is we're going to set a keyframe right here at number one for his position. So I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, and you can see down here at frame one, I now have my Data Man set. And if I hit play, he's going to stay here now instead of disappearing. And he'll just continue to walk on for a thousand frames. Not what I want. Okay, so let me go ahead and rewind that. What I want to do is I want to walk a few frames ahead and I want to turn. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my timeline here. I'm going to click and I'm drag to the point where I'm thinking I'm going to start making my turn and maybe right about there. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that his planted foot is flat on the ground in the passing pose. And here we have the passing pose. And we have Data Man's foot flat on the ground. So this process is actually pretty simple. It's just a bunch of steps to make it happen. So here, with everything set up, I'm going to go up here to Key and select Redirect Option Box. And this window will come up. And by default, the Rotation and Translation are the default uh, radio buttons that are selected. We're only going to rotate them. So I'm going to select Rotation Only. Okay. And then I'm going to move it a little bit out of the way. And I'm going to hit Apply. And... We have an error, and that's because I did not select the proper piece of my data man. So I'm going to control Z that. What I want to do is I want to select, again, that control root. So right here, the control reference, or the root, if you have a character with a root, which would be that object on the ground. Once that's selected, then I can go ahead and make sure I'm on rotation only and hit apply. Now he turns purple. See how all the bones turn purple? And I end up with this really large object um, with some arrows pointing on it, kind of hanging around him. It's so big because I've shrunk Data Man down quite a bit. If he was back at his normal size, this would be about the size of a foot. So I'm going to hit R on my keyboard, and I'm going to shrink that down just so that it's about the size of his foot. I'm going to hit W, and I'm going to pull it forward. And if you take a look, right here in the center, there's a little dot. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see that. It's a little green dot right there in the center. <clears throat> we want that dot to be right here on his planted toe. So I'm going to pull it forward. Try to put it on his toe. And the other thing we need to do is, because I've resized it, it's also elevated it up off the ground. See how it's high like this? What I want to do is, let me go to my channel box and I'll show you. Right here is at 0 0.073 for translate Y. If your ground level is zero, you want to make sure your translate Y stays zero. But his feet are slightly off the ground. So I'm going to push this down until I make that bottom line just about disappear. And I get that green dot close to the ground. And I put it back at his toes. And that should be somewhere for my character because of the height of the sidewalk. It's about 0 0.066. So I want to make sure that I keep all of these green lines at about that same point. So now I've got 
it on his toe, just right where I want it, right here at the tip of his toe. And I've resized everything. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S on my keyboard here at frame 29. And that starts the process. I also want to make sure that my auto key is on now. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going to take my timeline and I'm going to move it forward a little bit to the point where that foot is about to come off the ground. And see, it looks like it dips in just a little bit into the ground. Let's fix that, clean up later. All right, so there's that point right there is about to come off the ground. Okay. And actually, I guess maybe it's just the angle of the foot. All right, so right there is where I want to now do the rotation because when we walk, we actually use our toes to help us turn. So now I'm going to hit E on my keyboard and I'm going to just rotate him just a slight amount. And you can see I rotated him 30 degrees, roughly 30 units. So um, about 30 degrees. That might be a little bit too much. I'm going to go back just a little bit. And the other thing is, is I believe that because of the way he's rotating, my um, <clears throat> degrees are set up. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Oh, right, here it is. Snap step. Absolute 15 degrees right here at the top. I don't know why I didn't see it. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, you may want to check, but stat, uh, step snap was set at 15 degrees, which was why I was getting 0, 15, and 30. So now that gives me some freedom to be able to rotate them. See how now it's not snapping like it was? So now I can go ahead and rotate them a little bit more realistically. All right, instead of so regiment, uh, regimented with 15 degrees. So that might be a good place to start. I'm going to close that now. All right, so once I've done that, you can see down here on my timeline, this is my first uh, first uh, keyframe that I set with S, and this is the auto keyframe at, key, at frame 38. So if I went ahead and backed this up a little bit, you can see that my data man walked a little bit and started to turn. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scroll just a little bit further forward until his foot's planted at the passing again. Okay. I'm going to select his main control again so that his bones turn green. Once I'm happy with where my foot is, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply again on this. And now you see I have my very large control area again for my turning. Shrink that down. Hit W on my keyboard to move it. Grab it. And I'm going to place it on his planted flat foot. And I'm going to change my translate Y to 0.066. Okay, drop that down a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish fine tuning that into the toe. If I grab this uh, plane area right here, see how the arrows and then I have the flat plane here. This keeps it on the same plane, my flat plane that I want, but allows me to kind of freeform move it without having to use the arrows. And I got it on his toe, and that should work. If I grabbed this one, it would move it up and down. This one moves it along the z-axis down here where I want to move it. Okay, so now once I have that set, I hit S again. And then I'm going to move my timeline a little bit further forward until his foot starts to come off the ground. Right about there. Okay, once that's done, E on my keyboard, and I'm going to rotate him just a little bit. Again, got to be careful not to grab the wrong one. I just want to grab the rotation. I don't want to move him up or down. If we accidentally rotated him this direction, so X in the X direction, um, or lifted him up in the Y direction, that would be bad. It would cause him to kind of do this weird sideways turn. We don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure we stick to just rotating in the Y axis. Do not rotate in the X or the Z. All right, so with that done, again, 
S was where I my first keyframe is, and then the auto keyframe to the second one. And again, we can check on it by moving our line backwards. And you can see as he moves forward, he starts to turn. Again, I'm going to plant the foot for the passing. Select his root, in this case, the control. And now I'm going to hit the apply button on my character redirection options. I'm going to scale this tool down significantly. Hit W on my keyboard. So I shrunk the size down by selecting R on my keyboard. Or you can select one of these tools over here. Scale or move, rotate and scale. And again, I'm going to change my translate Z for mine to 0 0.066. Yours may be at zero. Yours may also be something different. So you just need to double check. Um, again, some point of reference that's the same. You can see that my line right here is my point of reference that I'm using. Okay. Now I want to make sure that I get this right on his toe. Auto save keeps popping up and you may be wondering why. I have my auto save set up so that um, it asks me if I want to do autosave. Otherwise, if I don't have it set up to ask, it may just automatically autosave. And then you can end up with, I don't know, you know, tens, twenties, hundreds of files backed up, depending on how often you leave this open or how many hours you leave it open. And that takes up a lot of memory in your computer. So you can always opt to not save autosave if you want. Um, of course, the other choice is control S and save quite often as you're doing this so that you don't lose your um, program. And I didn't really mean to do that for our city. I should have saved this as a new scene. So file, save scene as. And I'm going to, again, call this uh, um, not in my data man. I want to save this in my city. And I'm going to make this the second version here. All right, so um, I have to go back and clean out my R city because I wanted that to not have any uh, anything done to it, just be the basic city. So that's okay. I can always fix that. So now with this set on my toe, I'm going to go ahead and hit S on my keyboard again. And now I'm going to move them a little bit further forward. Until that foot starts to come off the ground, right? Right there. Get an E on my keyboard to rotate him, rotate him a little bit more. I'm taking a little bit more time to rotate him this time. And once that's done, double check my S and then my auto frame right there. So we should be good. And I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Now, one thing I want to point out, if his skeleton is not purple when you're doing this, that means that you've probably rotated it based off of one of these other control units because it was still selected. And that's going to cause some problems with the way he turns. You can set these redirects up so that you have a redirect piled on top of a redirect, and you can have multiples of those. And then when you go to run him, uh, run the animation, you'll see things just get very strange. So um, if it's not working the way you're supposed to, double check yourself and make sure that um, every single one of these redirects is actually connected to the data man or your character's root or to the control, um, base control. So. Anyway, um, now we've got that set up. We're going to go ahead and move forward again. I'm going to plant his foot on the ground in the passing mode. I'm going to select his um, root or his um, control uh, wrist, his control rigging. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply again. Scale this down using my R key. And your character may be much larger than this character is right now, so you may be able to uh, not have to do this rescaling. And, you know, you don't really have to, but 
Um, I do it just to kind of keep things smaller without getting kind of crazy in my scene. Change this height. Try to keep these the same. Did I not do that? Yeah. Um, I try to keep them the same so that uh, if there's any, there won't be any, any issues. Because the other thing you can do is if you start to lift these up or push them down, your character will start walking into the ground or start walking up into the air. So you got to make sure that you don't let that happen. Okay, so <clears throat> that one's set. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard again. Now I'm going to move my timeline forward down here. I'm going to just grab it. Move it forward until that foot starts to come off the ground. Right about there. E on my keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and do a rotate. And we're almost there. Yeah, just about there. All right. So now again, double check. Make sure my keyframes are set. And I'm going to do it all again. And plant it. Crossing. My passing position, select my um, control or my root. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. <clears throat> going to rescale my tool. I'm going to move it. Using the W key, I'm going to move it. Got ahead of myself there. And put it near his toe again. Change this. 0 0.066. Enter. Go ahead and get the toe lined up. Okay. And hit S on my keyboard. Now moving forward again. Foot starts to leave the ground. E on the keyboard. And I think this ought to be just about it. I'm going to go ahead and rotate him. I'm just going to go ahead and push it until I got him going the direction I want him to go. Okay. And that should be good for that. I'm going to minimize this so we can kind of hit the re rewind button and hit play and see how he works. And you can see he's now been redirected. Probably could have done it one more time to get him to completely walk this direction, but maybe he's taking a wide turn and I'll just redirect him at the other corner. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for this video because I think you get the idea after this. And that is basically a character redirect. Um, took probably about uh, 20 minutes longer to explain than I wanted to, but that's okay. Um, again, if you like what you see, please uh, subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, please leave them for me. I'll be glad to hear what you have to say, and I'll try to answer any questions you have. And other than that, thank you for watching. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon.